My name is Nate Gartman, more commonly known as Noodle for childhood memory purposes. I'm about 21 years old at the moment, and at at the time of the story that I'm about to recall that happened, I was about 17. I'm not a college student, and I, I never decided to go. I live with my parents, and... <sighs> Hopefully, this story will give you some reason why I'm not out and about, uh, partying with friends or studying with uh, studying for classes. It seems pretty uh, self-explanatory at the end. I don't know what I did to deserve the fate that I've met, but I, I can't take much more of this. I locked myself in the closet with several highly caffeinated beverages, and I'm hoping they'll keep me awake long enough to publish my story. After I tell my tale, I I'm leaving. Permanently. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll be glad to spare me the trouble of doing it myself. It all started when I, I, uh, I, I got that stupid cloth doll, or whatever it was. My family had gone on vacation to the Caribbean, and the place itself was absolutely breathtaking. I wish I could say the same for the people we had met, as uh, my dad worked at a very low-paying job. We couldn't afford it, really, to go on a cruise or stay at a nice place at a bar of the Caribbean. No, we just, um... Stayed at an old vacation home that my grandparents had purchased when they were newly married. It was in um, a very small part of the island, and you couldn't pass through the street without being cataloged by the homeless men or offered drugs by random people. Some of them were having kids with them. To be frank, it's like Detroit, but with more um, oceanic people. I wasn't a big traveler, and I'll be frank with you, I preferred my own home. And this place definitely would not have been on the top 10 list of places I wanted to go. At least at the time. So my attitude wasn't the best the entire trip. That was... Up until the beach festival. The beach festival was something that the locals arranged every year. Simply to celebrate living. In fact, they had a special word for it. Uh, Samaritans... Uh, Samuloka? I don't know. Anyway, the only thing I can remember is that they brought well-cooked meals and decorations for the gathering that took place when the sun went down along the sandy side beach. I was eager to meet some people who hopefully didn't offer me drugs or some form of alcohol. And were maybe, if I'm lucky, around my age. Maybe even, you know, a girl. We were planning on being on vacation for about a month, as it was summer and I was off of school. And my father was off to work as he was a teacher for a middle school. My mother um, went on and on about this festival all day before it started, telling me how great it is and reaffirming how... Uh, whatever. She also recalled some experiences she had with her grandparents that had taken her there when she was a very young girl. And she wouldn't shut up about how amazing and beautiful the place was. Keep in mind, I love my mother, and I love her stories, but the ones that she were telling me, she had been told, and I had been told, a thousand times before in previous years. She told a story about the man who got on stage and sung together beautifully with that older woman and then somehow knocked the table down and sent food flying and it gave a week's full of laughs. Laughs, oh my god. And then I would always say, thanks, that's great mom, G go. No. Throughout her um, excited rambling. As the day grew darker, I grew more and more excited to see what was in store for the night. It had been hyped up quite a bit, as I told you about my mom. I, um, I got ready, making sure to wear some reasonably nice clothes, and I waited in the living room for my parents to be ready as well. They didn't take too much longer, and we had an old family friend, um, I called him... Emilio, or something along those lines, and he drove us across to the festival. Emilio was an older man who babysit for my mom when I was much younger, and when he was in his teens. He had grown up next to my grandparents' vacation home, and his family would often come to stay and visit my grandma, my grandpa, and my mom. When we approached the beach, 
laughing and yelling could be heard from the torch lit place. I nearly leapt out of the car and walked down the beach, not bothering at all to wait for um, my parents or Emilio. I looked around the festival as I got down to the beach. It was large, stretching off a good part of the sandy landscape, with many tables and lots of food around. I approached one of the tables and I grabbed a plate. I then made my way through the line and got what appeared to be some pork from a friendly man behind a table, then sat down at the table with the candle lit in the middle. As I pushed my plastic fork down into the meat, I could hear someone clear their throat. I looked up to see a little boy stuffing his, um, shuffling his feet nervously. Looked to be about 14 and... Uh, that's, uh, yeah, about 14, that's the most I could gather. I then proceeded to smile at him and I asked, uh, how may I help him? That was very polite when I did. He coughed nervously with his shaky hands and set something down on the table. I picked it up and I inspected it closely. It appeared to be a very, very small cloth doll. Its beauty was in the sewing and knitetry, and appeared to be quite old. It was a, it, it was a small boy who had a uh, button-like eyes. It didn't appear to be painted on, but it had a uh, cloth-like body. I looked back at the boy and asked if the boy was giving it to me, and if he was, to thank him. But when I looked up, the boy who had given me this item was gone, and I scanned around the crowd around me, and I couldn't find him at all. I shrugged and went back to eating, not giving the boy a second thought. However, I put the doll into my backpack, certain it was, um, it would be good for this, it would be a good memorial for this occasion. Now, after that, a experience, I recalled that the rest of the party went fairly well and quickly. Nothing really creepy happened. Uh, I danced, I ate, I chatted, and I did what most any person would do at a party. However, when the festival drew to a close, my family and I drove back with Emilio. As we got into the car, my parents thanked him kindly and we went inside. I was still getting my stuff out of the back, as I thought of a few things from the vendors that had set up shop there, assuming it would be good money. Emilio stopped to help me, um, taking a few of the um, heavier bags for me. I paused remembering the doll and asked Emilio if it meant anything or if it was valuable in some way. As soon as I pulled it out, he paled slightly, an uneasy expression immediately replaced his usual calm one. I gave him a quizzical look, and um, he laughed shakily. Uh, I think that girl um, may have liked you, Noodle. He said with his um, fake happiness in his voice. Uh, no, it doesn't look valuable, and... I don't think I've seen anything quite like this before. Perhaps you should just, um, keep it for a while and maybe give it to one of your, um, friends eventually. I then proceeded to smile. Okay, um, uh, thanks, Emilio. The man nodded and quickly took his things and went back inside, telling me to have a good night and, well, leaving. I took no notice of Emilio's strange behavior and I simply went to bed. That night, a girl came to me. She had looked about my age, maybe a bit younger, and was wearing a very, very dark hoodie and long pants. When she looked up at me, I saw a patch that was cruelly taped onto one of her eyes. She reached into his pocket slowly and took out a piece of paper with a foreign word marked on it. A grin started to appear and spread across her face, growing wider and wider until her cheeks actually begun to split, almost like that scene from Mirrors, blood blossoming at, blood blossoming at the tears into his dark skin. She tossed the paper at me and when it was about halfway towards me, I, it caught fire and disintegrated immediately. What the fuck is going on? The, the pile of ashes fell into the otherwise clean floor and I stared at the ashes before switching my gaze back to this girl who was fumbling 
at the tape holding her makeshift eye patch in place. A awful ripping sound met my ears as she pulled the tape off. It sounded as if the tape had mended with her skin over time. A white patch fell away from this closed eye and touched the floor before immediately burning up. Just as the nose had, just as the note had, the boy then opened his eye, or the eye that should have been there. Where the eye was supposed to be, there was an empty black socket. Very slowly, a leaking, thick red blood started leaking. The boy suddenly screamed in agony so loudly I could hear my own eardrums burst. I quickly covered my ears and I felt the blood against my fingers. I, I couldn't drown out this inhuman sound of, shri of shrieks. It was so painful. It was, oh, God. I woke up, panting, sweating, and I sat up on my bed. I looked around and I recognized my own room at my parents' house. I didn't know why the memories of that vacation night had haunted me, or th the strange girl in my dreams. But, I started calling her Diablo. I tell my therapist and many other doctors of this Diablo often. They always ask me the same things. Do you recognize her? Does he remind you of anyone? Is it ever anyone else? No, no, and no, I've never seen Diablo, as I like to call it. Um, though, he looks vaguely familiar, and the gender tends to swap, believe it or not. It, it sometimes is a very young male or rather older female. Either way, every time it appears to me, it always has that same defining characteristic. Dead pale skin. An eye patch. And long yellow fingernails. He or she doesn't remind me of anyone I've ever seen or met. He. It is rather unhuman. Inhuman. No human can make such noises such movements as it shuffles and scuttles around no human can snap their own neck and then stab you with their spine i've been having visits from this creature diablo as i call it every time i fall asleep ever since ever since that dreaded trip and now my parents recently left for another this time for my grandmother who is on her deathbed they insisted I did not come, thinking it was so traumatic as... Thinking that something so traumatic as that would only worsen my nightmares. So I stayed. Above is the recollection of my first dream, uh, in which Diablo made his or her presence known. With all that had appeared in some of my dreams as well, um... That fucking doll. Whoever that girl was, she knew a Diablo. She had seen it himself. That is, that, that, that's why he seemed so nervous. He had already long since cracked. He, he thought of, he thought that if maybe, maybe be able to sleep again. But I've heard others scream as Diablo tortured me, and they would never be safe again. They would never have a pleasant dream again.